sometimes when people start having situations in their lives, when they start having problems, when they start having struggles and obstacles in their lives, they try to fight it in the way they're used to fighting it. Let me tell you something. This is a spiritual battle, and you cannot fight a spiritual battle in your flesh. You cannot fight what's going on in the spirit realm in your flesh because I told them also there's a spirit realm and there's a natural or physical realm that we live in, but there's a spiritual realm that's going on that we cannot see. There's things that's going on right now that we cannot see. There, 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 there's, if you believe in God and believe there's a heaven, there's a spiritual realm. And just like there's a God in heaven, there's a Satan, a devil who operates in this, in this realm right now. Amen. Amen. So we must understand in order to fight the wiles of the devil, that's what he's talking about, in order to stand against the rulers of this, this, this wicked world and this spiritual weakness, we must learn how to fight in the spiritual realm. Yes. So that's what we want to continue to talk about today because I opened this up, but I didn't get into all of this armor that we're going to wear and this, all this armor that we have to use in order to fight this battle because I don't know about you, but I found out that God has given us the victory, but the, the issue is a lot of people don't understand how to, how to take the victory and, and claim it as their own. A lot of times people don't know that God has already won the battle for you or fought the battle for you, but you got to learn how to get into that thing that it is that God has called you to do in order that you might see the victory in your life. So many people are living defeated and struggling right now simply because they don't know how to take on this whole arm of God. So we're going to deal with that again today. Uh, so if you will, this will be whole arm of God part two today. Amen. So uh, verse 12, I want to start talking about the, this armor that God is, is telling us that we're going to use. Amen. And I want to kind of show you how Paul is comparing this, this, this armor of a soldier uh, to the spiritual armor that you and I are going to wear. We're not going to put on all this armor. A lot of times, you know, if you watch those old movies and you see it in the Bible, I mean, in, in movies and back in the Bible days, even ancient times, a soldier would get geared up. Before he was going to go to war, he put on all this armor. He, he had to have the helmet on. He had to put on all this. You, you've seen those, those soldiers that's walking around and all that stuff, all this full body armor. And I was reminded of the story when David went to fight Goliath. How David, uh, Saul tried to put all this armor on David, but it was too heavy, it weighed him down. And David said, no, you know what, I can't do this. This is not the way I'm used to fighting. I'm not used to all this armor. So what David did, he took all this stuff off. And we know the story. He went and got five smooth stones. He had a sling, amen. And that's all the armor that David needed, amen. So what I'm trying to tell you today is you're not going to wear all this physical armor that we're talking about. Paul just used that to compare that physical armor to, to the spiritual armor. You and I have to put on this armor that we cannot see. The armor that you and I are going to wear is armor that you cannot see, but you have to get clothed in this armor. And we're going to find out how to do that today. Amen. So we find out here now, Paul is taking a closer look. When we look at this, Paul is talking about here, the soldiers. So everything he talked about, he started beginning to talk about this armor. And he started talking about what a soldier would wear, and then we're going to relate it to what we would wear. Amen. Glory to God. So the first thing Paul started talking about was the belt of truth. When he talked about girding up your loins in verse 14, he says, Stand therefore having your learns girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. So he started with talking about this belt of truth. Now this is what you have to understand about a soldier. When a soldier back in those ancient times would get geared up, this belt is what he put around his waist. The loins is your midsection here, so it was wild enough to cover your major organs, and that, that's what he had to put on. He had to put on this belt of truth, which was covering his major organs protecting his midsection, vital organs, kidneys, and all of that thing, all of those type of things. What you and I have to do is put on this belt, this spiritual belt of truth. That protects us, y'all. This yes. spiritual belt of truth protects us against all the lies and all the schemes, all the deception that the enemy will try to bring against us. The spiritual belt of truth will protect us and, and gives us the truth of God. So many don't understand that they've been set free by the truth of God. But if you don't have an understanding of God's truth and God's word, then you'll, you'll be susceptible to things that'll come in and try to deceive you and things that'll try to take you out of God's will for your life. Mm -hmm. So we gotta understand that this belt, this belt in the midsection, now a man would really uh, understand this because a man know a belt holds his pants up in place, amen. So if you think about it, all your spiritual defenses, this belt holds all your spiritual defenses in place. So we have to make sure that's the first thing we, we arm ourselves with is having on the belt of truth, which is the truth and the word of God. We have to make sure that we have the word of God on the inside of us. So when Satan comes with his deception, when Satan comes with lies, when Satan comes trying to use people against us, we know the truth. Amen. We know the truth because the Bible says the truth will make you free. Amen. So then he started talking about it. And then later in that verse, eight, verse 14, he said the breastplate of righteousness. Now, you understand something about the breastplate of righteousness was, in those days, the soldiers had this breastplate on covering their chest. 
Okay, he started with the belt. Now he's up on this, this big breastplate. Think about that, covering your whole chest, stomach area, and all of that, uh, protecting your heart and your lungs and all this area right in here. So we must understand now, if you don't have the breastplate of righteousness on in you, you'll be vulnerable to the wickedness of the enemy, the wickedness of this world. You got to be able to cover your heart. You got to be able to cover your lungs. He started talking about righteousness. Let me talk about righteousness a little bit because I don't think a lot of people understand. Righteousness is the quality of being morally right. Okay, righteousness is someone who would do the right thing, who's, who's set on doing the right thing. There's another thing we need to understand about righteousness. You cannot become righteous in your own regards. It's only because of Jesus Christ that we are made righteous. We, we can't be righteous. I don't care how many works you try to do, whatever you try to do. He talked about it in Ephesians chapter 2. He said, it's by grace you are saved. Okay, it's a gift of God, not of any works of your own that you might boast about it. So in order for us to become righteous, it has to be us getting the gift of God, which makes us righteous. Amen. Amen. Someone who's going to do right even when it doesn't look, when someone's not around. So many times people know how to put on that front and try to do right things when they think someone's looking. You know how it is on the job. A lot of times people try to, oh man, they put on that front, man, I'm going to do good. I'm going to look good for the boss. I'm going to put on all this. I'm going to do right. I'm going to go over here, man. I'm going to do my work. I'm going to sit at my desk. I'm going to do everything while they're looking at me. Mm -hmm. But someone who's morally righteous is someone who does right and does good when no one is looking. Yes. God is looking for somebody who's going to bless his name, who's going to continue to do the right thing even when no one else is around. Mm -hmm. That's what God is saying about righteousness. And guess what, y'all? Because of Jesus Christ, we have the ability to be made righteous. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So then he talked about uh, through righteousness, we can not come righteous on our own, but then he talked about justification, which is the act of declaring righteousness. Jesus said, you know what? Because you got saved, I'm now declaring you righteous. That's a, that's a gift of God, y'all. That's, that's, that's something to be praised right there because guess what? Before we got Jesus in our life, before we got saved, before we came to him, we were not righteous. We, we were not declared righteous. But he said, once you have become a, a child of God, once you have accepted Jesus Christ in your life, you are now declared righteous. Glory to God. So that's what he was talking about, the breastplate of righteousness. You got to be able to guard your heart. You got to be able to guard your, your everything. Let me tell you something. If you don't guard your heart, anything can try to creep in your heart. And before you know it, like I said, talk, starting with that mind, all these thoughts can come in our mind. And before you know it, if you meditate on it long enough, it's going to get in your heart. Yes. You see, when people do all these, commit all these crimes we're reading about, and every day you see something else happen. It started as a thought, y'all, that came in their mind. And then they meditated on it long enough, and then they started to premeditate on it, and it came in their heart, and guess what? They acted out on it. So it is with us. When we get the things of God on the inside of us and start to think more on the things of God, start to meditate. He told Joshua, meditate on this book day and night. Yes. Once we meditate on the things of God, they begin, to, they begin to eventually get into our heart. That's why you can speak the word of God even when the situation doesn't look right. That's why you can speak the word of God even when the enemy is trying to come against you. When he comes in like a flood, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. That's why you become righteous when you begin to get the word of God on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. So he's talking about this breastplate of righteousness. And then he went on to talk about now having your feet shed in, verse, in the next verse, verse 15, and have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We still put on our armor now. We started with the belt. Now we got our, our breastplate of righteousness on. Now we're getting our feet ready. Often back in those ancient times, the, the, the terrain was rough and a, and a soldier had to have the proper footgear, protected footwear, in order to be able to uh, uh, walk the terrain, in order to fight the battle. And often what the enemy forces would do is they would throw all, scatter all these spikes down, all this stuff down, and try to, you know, mess your feet up and, and cause all, and slow you down, basically. So it is with the enemy, y'all. A lot of times what the enemy tries to do to us, he tries to scatter, he tries to, he tries to, tries to make our path tough. He tries, to, he tries to cause us to stumble. He tries to cause us to fall. So what we got to do is we got to make sure that we cover our whole body and we start, we cover our feet also. Because guess what? He doesn't want you to be able to spread the gospel. He doesn't want you to be able to share the good news. He doesn't want you to be able to tell somebody else how good God has been to you. Because guess what? That's going to be a testimony. I found out something about a testimony. Your greatest testimony is your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. The way you live is the way, the way is your testimony. If, if you live a life that's torn up and jacked up, guess what? That's what people are going to see about you. And nobody, let me tell you something, people are not going to receive anything you have to say when you start talking about the things of God. But when you live a life in front of people, that they, they can see God in your life. When you can, you can uh, the life when you can still talk to people and still treat people right, even when they did you wrong. Mm -hmm. 
even when you, you have a spirit to say, you know what, I still thank you, I still love God, I still bless you, even though you did me wrong. That's yes. when you show it by your lifestyle. Amen. So he said, get your feet now ready. Because when these enemy forces try to come against you, Satan doesn't want you to do that. I want to read a verse to you in 1 Peter chapter 20, uh, 4, when he said, uh, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. You gotta understand something. Jesus faced much opposition as he was doing the will of God in his ministry time. He was facing, we know about the Pharisees, the Sadducees, all these religious folk. Every time Jesus would heal somebody, it was on the Sabbath, they trying to get him caught up. He giving people, uh, giving uh, the, the blind sight, all these people trying to catch Jesus up. So it is with you and I. As we try to walk this walk out, as we try to live for God, guess what? There's going to always be opposition. That's the first time to let you know that you're doing something right. Yeah. When you start to come against opposition. And the Bible just told us, don't think it's strange when these fiery trials come against you. You got to keep on pressing in God. You know what? I'm going to keep on pressing in God. Even though these things are coming against me, I know. And that's what he said in the second part. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. Even though you're going through something for Christ, guess what? He's always going to be there with you. He's always going to take care of you. He's always going to protect you. So you don't have to worry about this. In another verse he talked about in 1 Peter 3 and 15. He said, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks of you for a reason of hope that is you with the meekness and fear. And that's what he's talking about. When we're spreading this gospel, when you got your feet shed for the preparation of the gospel, you got to always be ready to give an answer to somebody. Somebody will ask you, well, why are you so happy all the time? Why, why does it seem like you don't ever get razzled or dazzled? Why, why does it seem like you don't ever get phased by anything? And that's your door. That's your window of opportunity to get in there and say, you know what? It's the peace of God which passes all understanding. Whenever you face a situation, because let me tell you something, whether you know it or not, people are looking at you. People are, are wondering, especially when a situation is going on. Maybe everybody else on the job is getting upset because they found out there's no money coming, that, that people are quitting, people are leaving, all these, but you still sitting there with a smile on your face. It's the peace of God. And that's an opportunity for you to say, what? You know what? It's the peace of God. That's why I can do this. Even though it seems like my bills are out of control, my children are out of control, all my fine, everything is just seems like all kind of haywire is going on in my life, chaos in my life. It's the peace of God. I can sit there and still have a smile. I can still thank Him. Amen. Amen. So we, you don't have to know a hundred scriptures to be able to tell somebody about what God has done in your life. You don't have to help us. You just you just need to be able to tell somebody because guess what? People are on that level that you. That people are only going to be on that level that you can relate to them. Amen. So you don't have to worry about telling people. You know what? God has been good to me. That's what I can tell you. That's my testimony. God has been good to me. And then you can maybe begin to share some of the things that God has brought you through. Because let me tell you something. I found out a lot of things that we deal with in our life are because of somebody else. And later on, we'll be able to help somebody else with that. Maybe you went through a bad situation in a relationship. Later on down the road, you'll be able to minister and help somebody else. Mm -hmm. Maybe you went through a situation where your finances were not working out right. But then God brought you all the way through and you'll be able to minister and help somebody else. Maybe you were dealing with some things in your heart that you know are not right and God delivered you from those things. Now you can help somebody else. Amen. So that's what he's talking about when he's talking about getting your feet ready so that you can go and, and share this word of God. Amen. And then he begins to go on a little further when he talks about in verse 16, the shield of faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Oh, God, I don't know about you, but I know that joke has been shooting some darts at us throughout our lifetime. Amen. Amen. Can anybody testify? He's, he's, he's been shooting some darts Amen. against you. You know there's been some things coming against you. You know that the devil has been mad and upset. He's been trying to cause you to stumble, been trying to cause you to get off track. Amen. But let me tell you something. There's, there's some goodness in knowing that God is still with you because God has given you the shield of faith. Now, you have to understand something about the, the soldiers back in those ancient times. This shield now was, as you can imagine, this big old shield. A lot of times it was shaped in this uh, v shape. And there's a big old shield that they would use to put up in front of them whenever the enemy was shooting darts at them. So a lot of times what happens is that the enemy is shooting darts at us. He's trying, to, he's trying to cause us to confuse and he's trying to cause all these things in our lives. But God has said, I've given you a shield of faith. What is that shield of faith? And let me tell you, one of the greatest weapons that the enemy tries to use is the spirit of doubt. Mm -hmm. He tries to bring doubt in our mind. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. A lot of times what he'll do is when you know God has promised something in his word and when God, if you've been praying for something for a while and you know that God wants to do something in your life, the first thing that the enemy does if it starts to take a while, if it seems like it's not going to manifest in your life, 
eventually the spirit of doubt will begin to try to creep into your mind. That's one of his, that's one of his favorite weapons that he likes to use. But God has said, what you've got to do is you've got to know without a doubt that what God said in his word. As my wife said, we've been, we've been trying to get in ministry for a long time. We've been working in ministry for years, but we just kept something on the inside of us. Just kept saying, you know what? We know that God has called us to this. Even when I don't try to get away from it or do something else, God still brings me right back around to this thing. You've got to know what God has got in your life and plan for your life because he does have steps ordered for your life. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So you've got to know that God has got all these things planned for you. You've got to understand what God has said in his word. You know certain things that God has declared over your life. For you to be prosperous, for you to be in good health. He said, I wish above all things that you prosper and that you be in good health. God does not want us to be sick. So I don't declare sickness over my life. Even if it looks like I got a cold or something, I start rebuking it in the name of Jesus. Even if it looks like my finances are not trying to line up right, I start rebuking it in the name of Jesus. Start putting the word of God on it. Amen. And that's what he's called us to do because he's given us a shield of faith. So when the enemy tries to bring in doubt, let me tell you something. He's good at what he does. He tries to bring up deception in front of us, y'all. Uh -huh. A lot of times he'll try to bring up, you know what? God is not going to do that. You've been, how long have you been waiting? God is not going to bring you a husband or a wife. God is not going to bring you out of this situation. Mm -hmm. You've got to learn how to put the devil in this place. He said, I've given you power to tread upon the serpent. You've got to be able to say, devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You've got to be able to say, I will have everything God has promised me. I will walk in what God has called me to walk in. That's when you're putting up your shield of faith. Because he's steady shooting darts at you and trying to bring that down in your mind and your spirit. You still have said, you know what? I still believe the word of God. Just like the Hebrew boy said when they threw him in the fire, when he tried to burn him up, there was a fourth man walking with him. They said, you know what? Even though Nebuchadnezzar, you, you might want to kill us, we still not going to bow down to you. Even if our God don't deliver us, we know he's able to do it. You got to get that kind of spirit. You got to get that kind of mindset, y'all. Even if I don't get this thing on this side of glory, yes. I'm still going to bless yes. God. I'm still going to praise God no matter yes. what it looks Hallelujah. like. I'm still going to believe God. Yes. Amen. And once you get this, just something about that because if we understand that not even a hair on those boys' head was burning, not even a singe or smell of smoke even came because those boys trusted God to that degree. Mm -hmm. You can kill us, you can bring us up, never can us, but we still don't trust God. Yes. We still don't believe God. If we got to have that kind of attitude, I'm still going to believe God. Yes. Even though it looks like this right yes. now, I'm still going to trust God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm still going to believe that God's going to deliver me because he said he went in his word. Mm. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. You see, sometimes that's all you have is the word of God. Yes. To stand on the word of God. Even when people around you are saying something, just like just like Job's friends were saying this and that, man, what did you do? What did you you must have really made God mad? You must have really did something. His wife even said, You didn't just curse God and die. But what did good what did Job say? Woman, you sound like a foolish woman. I'm still gonna believe God. And then he said, Don't he trust me yet? Will I still don't he slay me yet? Will I trust him? Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. What I'm trying to tell you is somebody's gotta get the kind of yes. attitude and the kind of spirit to say, God, for, for God I live and for God I die. If I don't get this, I'm still gonna bless him. If I do get it, I'm still gonna bless him. It just don't matter. Paul said, I'm learning how to be a base and a bound. I'm learning how to be content no matter what situation I'm in. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I feel that glory. Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Yes. So that's the shield of faith he was talking about. Yes. Even when doubt comes yes. in. Yes. You got to have, I don't care, any kind of attitude. I'm still going to bless it. Yes. I'm still going to trust it, no matter yes. what it looks like. Yes. Glory to God. And I found out something, man. When you can put that kind of faith and trust in God, you just watch him move in your life. Yes. You just watch what he'll do in your life because he said, you, you know what? There is somebody who's going to trust me. There is somebody who's going to believe me for what I said in my word. Glory to God. And God is going to begin to open some doors in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we've got to understand something. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Yes. In other words, he's the beginning and the end. He's the alpha and the omega. Glory to God. He's already seen your life all the way through. So you just got to trust him. God, I still trust you. He told Jeremiah, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. I knew what the plans I had for you. I knew what I was going to do for you in your life. We just got to get in line with the Spirit of God. The problem is a lot of times people are not getting in line with the Spirit of God. People are walking by sight and not by faith. When he said walk by faith and not by sight. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So then he went on to talk a little further here mm -hmm. about the helmet. Yes. <laughs> uh, the helmet of salvation. Yes. Now this is very important because you got to understand something. A lot of us men and women too like like football and you know what we know the season's out right now but we love watching football but you understand so part of your uniform is having a, a helmet on amen uh -huh. so it was back in the day those soldiers they had to have a helmet on because guess what that's that's what everything's at y'all if you can if you can cut the head off something 
Man, you, you, you killed the body. Mm -hmm. So we got to understand something. He said, put on the helmet of salvation. Why do we need to do that? Because the helmet of salvation is the seat of the mind. That's where the mm -hmm. mind resides at. Mm -hmm. That's where your brain is at. Right here in your head. That's where all the thoughts come in. That's where all the things come in. That's how you make your decisions. That's where information comes in and then process, like I said, for either good or bad. That's where everything is at. So you got to be able to protect your head. So oftentimes I've seen when, when somebody, you ever heard that saying when they got in my head? Uh -huh. When somebody starts to speak things, you start to let things marinate and start to meditate on things and they get in your head, guess what? The body's going to automatically follow. Mm -hmm. Because when the head goes, the body will follow. Amen. Uh -huh. So when they begin to get in, when, when things begin to get in our head, that's why it's so important that we protect ourselves and we begin to put the right things in our mind. You know, it's, it's all right to do different things and experience different things, but we don't want to get to a point where we're, we're so far away from the Spirit of God that we're meditating on all these things. We're spending too much time doing the wrong things, too much time watching the wrong things, too much time listening to the wrong thing. Because guess what? Eventually that thing is going to get in our head, y'all. And before you know it, you, you, you'll find yourself leaning more towards that direction. Oh, I know it's true. Whatever we start to get in our mind the most, that's why we got to protect our minds and protect our thoughts. If I'm spending too much time watching this kind of thing that's not going to give God any glory, not going to help my life one, one bit, then I need to start to back off of that thing. Mm -hmm. If I'm spending too much time waste, wasting, my, wasting my hours, I look up a whole night is gone, I haven't did anything productive with my life, then maybe I need to start to get some more productive stuff in my life, like seeking God and yeah. just opening up the word of God. Because guess what? Those situations, what I found out, those situations can help me in my problem. Because when I get up the next morning, I'm still dealing with the same thing and I have not gone any further. That's why people try to medicate their problems and the issues with all these different things, drugs, alcohol, and all these other things, because they're simply not trying to fight the problem, they're just trying to med they're trying to keep the problem, trying to um, live with the problem, amen. So we gotta get to a place where we guard our mind, we gotta guard our thoughts, glory to God. So that's what he was talking about, this, the helmet of salvation. Because this is what I found out. A person who doesn't have their head right it's susceptible to anything, whether they be spiritual truths or spiritual deception. Because let me tell you something. When something sounds good and you don't know any better, people will tend to go with that. Mm -hmm. So we got to understand that we have to have spiritual truth. My wife and I always pray, Lord, give us a spirit of discernment. Mm -hmm. Lord, I need a spirit of discernment. If you don't pray anything else, pray for a spirit of discernment. You will be able to see the tricks of the enemy coming at you. A lot of times people can't see things that are happening. Oh, how did I end up here? Before they know it's an afterthought, how did I end up in this situation? Simply because you did not see when he came in. Let me tell you something. The enemy only needs one little window, y'all. One little sliver. And they can get into our lives. So we got to be able to guard our hearts. That's why you want to guard your mind with that helmet of salvation. Because you want to protect yourself on every corner, every situation. That's why it's important for us as parents and those that have little people in our life or little children, we got to pray over them and, and protect, yes. continue to protect them because they don't know what they're dealing with. They can't see these things coming, but we got to be able to guard them and cover them in the spirit realm. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So then he talks a little further. We're almost done here. He goes a little further here and he talks about the sword of the spirit in verse 17. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Yes. Now we have to understand something about the sword. Glory to God. You, you can picture this in your mind. I wish I had a picture of a soldier, but the sword, we know this is a long, long, sharp object, amen, that they would use for battle. Up to this point, we've been talking about all these uh, defensive weapons. We put on this belt of truth. We put on this uh, breastplate of righteousness. We put on the helmet of salvation. But now, those are all defensive weapons that we put on to protect ourselves. But the sword is an offensive weapon. Mm. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Think about that for a moment. Everything else we put on at this point was to protect us. We just put it on. Mm -hmm. But the sword is something you use to take the fight to the devil. Amen. Mm -hmm. the, the sword is something that you're going to use on the offensive uh -huh. now. So uh -huh. what we got to do is we got to be able to understand. You know what? He said the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Yes. So what does that tell me? That tells me now that if I'm going to fight this, this spiritual battle, I got to have the word of God. This is my, this is my sword. And you can just see this right now. Yes. Every time, when, glory to God, when the devil yes. tried to tempt Jesus in Matthew chapter yes. 4, every time he would come to Jesus with something, well, if you're the son of God, turn this bread into stone, Jesus said, it is written. In other words, yes. the word of God is how I fight you, Satan. Yes. The word of God is how I'm going to win this battle. Yes. Because it is, every time you say it is written, you, you just imagine yourself sticking that joker right there. Yes. It is written, Satan, you cannot have my family, you cannot yes. have my life. My gosh, that's a part all about me. It is written. Yes. And you got to be able to say, every time something comes in your mind, every yes. time something goes contrary to this word, 
you got to be like Jesus and say, it is written. Glory to God. Yes. And let me tell you something. Eventually, you're going you're to sink that joke. He got to back up. That's what the Bible says. Humble yourselves unto God and then resist the devil and he will flee. But you got to be able to just keep on sticking. Keep on. That's why I say every time, repetitive. Let me tell you something. This is not something we're going to do on a one-time occasion. Okay? Because let me tell you something. The enemy's going to keep coming back, keep trying to come against you. But the more you learn how to fight him, the more yes. you get up. I told people a, a few weeks ago, you got to make it up in your mind when you get up in the morning before you leave your house. You got to say, you know what? I'm going I'm to set the pace for this day. I'm going to set the stage for this day right now. In the name of Jesus, I'll come against you, Say You just rebuke him. Whatever, yes. whatever you come to your mouth, just start rebuking him and just saying, you know what? This is going to be the day, the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. And you start speaking over your job, start speaking before you get to the office, wherever your job is, whatever, when you get up, whatever you're going to do for that day, I'm speaking in the name of Jesus. It's going to be a great day in the name of you got to start taking the word. I'm telling you, you got to start fighting and poking that jungle with the sword of the spirit. Amen. Amen. Set the pace for your day. Go over to God. And so many people see that if you don't understand that, so many people start speaking stuff on themselves in the same manner. Start speaking negative stuff on you. Well, you know what? I don't feel good today. Well, you know what? I got this to deal with today. Well, you know, it would have been a good day, but, but, but. No, I'm telling you what you got to do is get it made up in your mind in the morning before you get up, before you leave your house. This is the day that the Lord has made. I share rejoicing. I mean, you got to start declaring some things. Start speaking life over your situation. That's why I say death and life are in the power of touch. Start speaking life over your situation. Glory to God. I will really have a glorious day. Me and my wife just had a testimony this week. Amen. I'm going to share it with y'all. Amen. We were having problems with our car. Amen. Uh, uh, over $1,000 worth of work, in fact. Mm -hmm. So we were like, you know what? We're not going to receive that in the name of Jesus. We got a warranty on this car. We tried back in March to get this warranty, this car uh, fixed back in March. They were saying, well, it's not really covered by the warranty because uh, it doesn't affect the performance. Now, it's doing all kind of crazy noise and making all kind of, but it doesn't affect the performance of the car. Are you serious? So, you know, we, we kind of let it go, you know, because it wasn't happening all the time. But then over the last couple of weeks or so, it really started happening every time we started the car up. So you know what? My wife even told me, she said, you know what? Sometimes you got to go back and look again at a situation. So she said, we need to talk to those people again about that situation. Mm -hmm. And God had already given me a place to go get the car fixed. So guess what we did, y'all? We called that place again and we said, you know what? In the name of Jesus, we started speaking it in prayer, first of all, before we even talked to those people. God, we don't have this and we're not going to pay for this. So God, we pay for that warranty. This situation will be resolved in the name of Jesus. Guess what, y'all? As soon as I talk to those people, as soon as I call them the next day, they say, okay, we'll take care of that part for you. Amen. Over a thousand dollars worth of work this week alone, we got to take care of. Amen. Because simply, guess what now? Yeah. Because we kept speaking this situation. We not, wasn't going to fall for that. We just weren't going to take anything. That's how we got to be in our life, y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to just accept that. I'm not going to yes. take that. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. God, we, we start telling God everything. God, this is your car. This is the car that brings all this stuff to this church, Lord God. We, start, we just start speaking the word of God, amen. And God worked that thing out for us in our lives, amen. amen. So what does God got to work out in your life? What situation do you need to tell God, Lord God, I need you to work this situation out in your life? I guarantee you he's listening. Yes. So here it is now. He's going to talk about the last thing here. Uh, he talked about that sword. And uh, then he went on to talk about verse 18, prayer, which I really can't do prayer justice in, in the little time I have left. But... He said, uh, verse 18, he said, when he started talking about prayer, praying always with all prayer and supplication in mm -hmm. the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Amen. So in verse 18, he started talking about prayer. Now, this is so important, y'all. If you're going to live for God, if you're going to walk with God, prayer is really not an option. Amen. It's it's not, it's not something that, you know, maybe if I feel like it, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. if it's a good day, I will. No. Mm -hmm. The believer has got to make prayer a part of their life. Amen. Amen. I mean, I can't stress it enough. It's got to be a part of a believer's life. That is our communication with God. That's when we talk to God. That, that, that's when we spend time talking to him. There's no set place that you have to be in prayer. I pray in my car. I pray in my house before I leave for work in the morning. I pray all at my desk during the day. You can pray in a situation. Paul said pray without ceasing. In other words, you can pray in any situation you're in. You can be sitting there by yourself just talking to God, amen, while you're at work. So we got to understand that prayer holds all this together and puts all this in place. You've got to be somebody that's going to have a life of prayer. You've got to be somebody that's dedicated to praying and talking to God no matter what the situation is in your life. Amen. And this is what I found out. 
Prayer is our means for getting our spiritual strength from God. Mm -hmm. Psalms 37 and 4 says it like this. Delight thyself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. It took me a while to understand that scripture. Years ago I had to really get revelation on that scripture. But what that scripture is talking about, when you start to pray yes. for God's will in your life, you begin. That's how you delight yourself in the Lord, and that's how you start to get the desires of your heart. Because guess what? A lot of times our desires are totally opposite from what God wants for our life, and people wonder why our prayers don't get answered because we're praying for something that God is not intended for our life. But the more that we start to pray, God, just like Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, when He said He knew He had to go up on that cross, on Calvary's cross, He said, "Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me." Mm -hmm. But then He said, "Nevertheless, not my will." But thy will be done. So what we got to do is we got to be able to pray the will of God in our lives, y'all. So maybe you need to start to switch what you're praying for. God, not so much of this thing, though. This is what the scripture says, Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. God knows what you stand in need of. He knows the money that you need. He knows the problems you have with your family. He knows all that stuff. But when you begin to seek ye first the kingdom of God, when you begin to say, God, not my will, but thy will be done. And then your life, your life will start to line up with the will of God for your life. Amen. So that's what prayer is, y'all. When you, when you can start to pray, see, a lot of times people don't understand this. It's, it's good to want things and desire things, but we should get our prayer lined up with the will of God for our life. Because I found out something. When I start to walk with the Lord and start to walk in the way he's got me to walk, all these things just start adding on to me. All these things just automatically come simply because I'm trusting God. I'm believing God. Because if I got my mind and eyes stayed on him, he's going to give me everything that he wants me to have. Amen. Amen. You can't miss the blessings of God if you keep your eyes focused. You can't miss the blessings of God if you keep your eyes focused on him. Amen. Amen. Glory to God because he's got some good and great things for us, but we got to make sure that our prayer life is in line with him. Amen. So God is telling us here, pray his will be done in your life. And you know what, I found out something, without prayer, all this other stuff we've talked about, this whole armor of God, I mean, it's just empty and pure, it, 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 it's not effective. So we've got to make sure, y'all, and I want everybody to start this thing, when you get home in the morning, start to pray and start to bless God, start to speak the things of God over your life, and start to believe that God is going to do those things in your life. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I know without a doubt, you will begin to see God move in your life. So many people are going to church year after year, and I'm not seeing God move in their lives like he wants to move in their life. They might get a little blessing here, a little something there, but I'm talking about seeing the, the fullness of God operating in yes. our lives. Me and my wife just believe there's no limit to God, amen. amen. We believe that we can have everything he said we can have. We believe we're gonna speak big things, amen. We gotta get our mindset to start speaking the big things of God. Don't speak just the little things, God, thank you for paying this bill. No, I don't need a water bill, I need a big house to have a big water bill, amen. Yes. Glory to God, that's what I'm talking about. Lord God, I thank you for meeting this need, amen. I thank you for just meeting my back's need so I can be a blessing to other people. I can bless somebody else. Amen. That's what God is looking for, somebody who wants to go further, someone who wants to yes. believe more. The Bible says he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask for. Yes. Think according to the power that's already on the inside of you. You already have the power on the inside of you, amen. amen. Glory to God. So we got to understand that, y'all. And I'm, I'm about done here, but we want to talk about this uh, you know, because I understand and I don't know how long we'll be teaching on this uh, spiritual warfare and how long we'll be teaching on this, you know, but I just feel a strong, strong in my spirit that, you know, people are, people are dealing with things and people are going through all kinds of situations. And it, it, it is a charge that I have from the Lord to kind of speak life over people and try to speak, uh, you know, that they can come out of these situations because it's not fun to be depressed all the time. It's not, it's not God's will for us to be depressed. It's not God's will for us to be stressed out. You know, so many people don't even look forward to getting up going to work in the morning because they got so much weighing them down. Amen. So many things are, are keeping them from really enjoying God and enjoying their lives. Amen. And that's not the will of God for our lives, for us to live these kind of lives. You know, and we've talked about this and all you got to do is just, like I said, look on the news. And every week it seems like somebody's dealing with something major, you know, and, and going through these things. And, and this is what I found out. I, I talked about this a minute last week. But we got to understand, there's some situations where we need professional help, amen, and there's nothing wrong with that. that that's a lie from the end of it, thinking people, well, I don't need professional help. That's, that's, sometimes you need to be able to talk to somebody and get some encouragement, amen, and get, and, and, and get some direction in our lives, amen. So as well as the spiritual side, and we can also get something on the professional side, amen, glory to God, to be able to live a life that God has called us to uh, live. And I found out something, the people that are dealing with these things is not a social or economic problem a lot of times. It's not just broke people who are killing themselves. It's not just people who don't have any hope that are, you know, depressed. 
A lot of times it's just something that's going on in a person's life and we got to be able to find out how to deal with these things, y'all, how, how to get this situation corrected and fixed in our life, amen. So the Lord wanted me to tell you, there is a way, amen, but we got to go and seek, seek and seek and find the answers, amen, to what he wants to do in our life. Glory to God. There's so much help available now. I want people to really start to watch this video and, and people to think about this, you know, what, what it is that I need in my life. What areas I'm not happy in my life. Tell the Lord, Lord, take an inventory of my life. What, what is not pleasing? What, what is not pleasing in your sight? And what, what is bogging me down? What is keeping me from enjoying you, the fullness mm -hmm. of God? And God will begin to show you those things. And then you begin to ask God, help me with this area. But God begin to show me, begin to put me in the direction of meeting people or whatever the situation is where I can get help with this situation. Amen. And God will begin to do that. Let me tell you something. God wants us to live a complete and full life. If you don't remember anything else, remember that God wants you to live a complete and full life. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because this is just a, a moment of time down here on this earth. Amen. Because heaven is where we're really going to party. That's what we're really looking forward to. So this time down here, he still wants us to have peace and joy and happiness even down here. But heaven is where we're going to really be excited and have a good time in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, let us get ready now. We, uh, thank you all for our Facebook Live family. We thank you. We'll see you again next week. Amen. Amen.